Ravens defense could slowly be turning into something good. I mean, really even great. Uh, first question came from a patron. Shout out to you, Juan. Uh, he said, what's up, Engraven? I want to point something out. The Thursday night game, go back and watch it. If our defense would have caught those interceptions they dropped, would we have blown out the Bucks? So, yeah, that, that game could have been even better and over a lot earlier uh, if the Ravens would have just held on. Um, and, and think about it. Even with the Bucks game, that's Tom Brady, Mike Evans, Chris Godwin, Kyle Rudolph, um, Leonard Fournette, uh, Brashad Perryman. Um, think about what the Ravens did to Tom Brady, Josh Allen, uh, Joe Burrow. Um, they they like they held them down. Daniel Jones, and I know it's Daniel Jones, but still Daniel Jones. Got to give him respect. He, he beat the Ravens. Um, so the Ravens have, and they done it to some other guys too, but the Ravens, their defense is really starting to get it, man. They starting to get it. Um, and against good quarterback, I mean, not even starting until they have been. They've been holding it down. We ain't been seeing these 300 yard passing games anymore. <laughs> like we saw early on in the season, they've been holding it down, man. So now it's about continuing that, getting those turnovers, catching those picks, getting the pass rush. The pass rush is it, slowly, been, overall, been getting better. In the Bucks game, it was, ah. Uh, but it's slowly getting better. So this Ravens defense, they they starting to click. It seemed like they starting to click. And oh man, that just kind of made me sad because I just realized that they uh they don't have Marcus Williams. So they could get him back later on. Um, but they and, and then they're gonna get a job or they gonna or well, hopefully. I don't know about him yet, but they're gonna get Tyus Bowser for sure. A job or we'll see. But um we expect both of those guys to be back, but it's still to be determined. Uh, and that would be this week. Hey, maybe by the time you see this video, they'll have been activated. We'll see, though. Um, but that could be a beautiful thing. Yeah, this feels like a dream. And you know just what I mean. You see my boy, he like gotta made it. How to made it. Boy, he's a fan and he like the Ravens. And you know just what I mean. Next question came from Professor Zoom. He said, what's up, Engraven? Uh, this is my first time sending in the question. Appreciate the videos, all the prep and execution you put into the content. I uh, hey, appreciate that. Thank you. Uh, quick question. Why on the punt fumble uh, on the Bucks did the Ravens players on the recovery, can't think of his name, number 25, or Kevon Seymour? Um, I think, why did he just lay on the ball? He could have scooped and scored. With fumble recoveries, I... Um, I'm not sure exactly what the rule is with that. I don't know if did he call for a fair catch? Cuz I don't know if that's it. If he I don't know if the rule is if he called for a fair catch and he fumbles, then the recovery just the recovery just stops where the ball is recovered at. Um or I don't know if it's yeah, if if they return and, and then they fumble. Like obviously if they return and then they fumble and they drop it, then it's a fumble. But I, I don't know what the rule is for that. So that's a really good question. So somebody in the comment section please explain if you understand it. Um, but anyway, he said we won definitively. Uh, I think that the team is that was a team defining win, like uh, in Seattle in 2019. Now let's get better and keep stacking. Appreciate it, much peace for you and the loved ones. P.S. Can we pay Lamar? To, can we pay Lamar? The irony of him playing the goat and winning when his wide receiver one and tight end one exit the game and elevate the talent and propel us to a dove. That's what Prime Brady did, and he did all last year. Pay the man. My fault for being long-winded. No, you ain't got a, nothing to apologize for. But, yes, I agree. Pay the man. I told you. Next question is a three-parter from my guy, Kevin. Much love to you, Kev. He said, I told you. All shotgun in the beginning of the game. No runs to your running back. A turnover inside the 10-yard line. Spare shotgun all three plays. Please get rid of Greg Roman. Um... <laughs> and that I I, I should have looked to see what time he sent that at, uh, and then uh, he's oh wow. Then following that, he said get rid of away too. No man, they need to put LOL. But no man, I, I guess he was just venting during the game. And then afterwards, uh, he said in the second half they listen. Hey, Engraven, someone listened to me in the second half of the game. LOL. Why not do that the whole game? Quick hitch passes, rollouts off your run fakes, attack the flats. I hope they keep listening. 
We all do. We all do. Um, will they? We'll see. That yeah, that rollout that you talked about, and it it the, the fa- it looked like I thought Lamar was gonna pitch it when he rolled out to the right. And um, they had Ken and Drake running behind him. It looked like he was going to pitch it to him. It looked like one of those uh, option plays. And I was like, oh, it's about to go to Ken and Drake any second now. But then Lamar threw it to Likely, and I was like, well, oh, wow. That, something so simple like that was so effective. We need more. Next question came from my guy, Ronald. He said, hey, Graven, first I want to say that I hope everything uh, with you is going well. As with the whole team, keep it clean, fam. Appreciate that. Uh, I love watching videos or listening to them while I drive to work. You always keep me posted on Raven stuff. And whether or not I want to scream in excitement or shout. <laughs> or shout out of rage. Uh, but now for my question, maybe I haven't been paying attention or I didn't see or hear this. But what happened to Josh Ross? He's on injury reserve. He's on injury reserve. They did say last week that he was practicing off to the side by himself. But he's currently on injury reserve. Um, he said, I know he was injured in the beginning of the season, but after that, I haven't heard anything about him. But we need linebackers, especially now that Bynes went down and we don't know what his deal is. I, I think Bynes just got benched. He, I don't think he was hurt, was he? Was he hurt? I don't know. But, hey, in his absence, those guys stepped up. And one thing I was worried about, I'm like, man, we going against Tom Brady and Josh Bynes is not playing. Probably the, the smartest linebacker on the team. And again, that's not a shot at anybody. But Josh Bynes, with all that experience, I say, oh yeah, that's probably one of the smartest, the smartest linebacker on the team. But um, because he's always like a right place, right time kind of guy. Ain't got all the athletic ability in the world, but right place, right time. But when he when he was when he was not active for the game, I was like, oh, oh okay. But it worked out. Um, he said, uh, we don't know what his deal is. Oh, and how the tackling was in the Tampa game, especially at the linebacker position, was a little bit suspect. Uh, we need someone who can make smart plays yet have the physical athletic ability to be there. That's hard to find. It's hard to find a good combination of both. Uh, and I feel like Josh Ross fits that mold. Do you think we'll ever see him back on the field? Yeah, for sure. For sure. Uh, also, P.S., this is my first question. Hopefully, you'll see it. Have a great day. Hey, I hope you have an even better one. This question came from my guy, Akeem. He said, I ain't great, a long time subscriber to the channel uh, and love the brand and content. Uh, I've been really noticing something for a very long time. Oh, appreciate it. Thank you. I've been noticing something for a very long time and wanted to get your thoughts on it. Harbaugh has recently been asked about the Red Zone struggles as of late. Um, specifically, what is the cause and how they, how can they improve? He gave the same answer he always gives, saying, we just have to get it done. My question is, have you noticed the lack of design plays specifically for wide receivers in the red zone, whether it be a fade, a back shoulder? Oh, Ravens, they're they, they not a fade type of team. They, they, don't, they don't do that. That's, that's just never has been them. Will it ever be? Hey, we love it, but they just don't do that. It's not them. Uh, back shoulders uh, In the red zone I feel like No No That's never really been them either uh, Slants They do that sometimes Or rub routes off a bunch set I feel like if Ravens did like a rub route I feel like they get called for offensive pass interference every time man. Every time um, But that, that would be something they could try to incorporate Because that, that, it gets guys open like, it literally gets guys open because somebody gets rubbed. But anyway, um, aside from throwing jump balls twice to Duvernay further away from the goal line, we really show no wide receiver involvement. Uh, in my opinion, this has always been an issue with Greg Roman's offense, and lately it's been more noticeable than ever before. Uh, it's like it's either basic run plays if they run at all or isolating Andrews. Have you noticed this at all, and how can Ravens media shine light on it and put pressure on the Ravens coaching staff to stop holding our wide receivers captive with their lack of creativity on offense? Mm. That's a really good uh, question. Um, that's not anything that I had really thought of like that before. That's a really good question. But with you talking about how they're not focusing on wide receivers in the red zone, um, that would be philosophy. There's a lack of, of focus and an emphasis on a wide receiver just as a whole. So that would be that. Uh, that would have a lot to do with situational play calling. Because, yeah, a lot of times in the red zone, it does seem like it, they either run the ball. Um, or if they don't run it, then it, it, it seems like Mark Andrews or bust. There's other times when other guys make stuff happen. There's been times when Lamar just missed some guys, too. Um, so it, it can be a lot of different things. It all depends. But situationally, uh, situation situational football is something that... We've been talking about for for years that the Ravens got to get better at. Um, so I think that would definitely be a coaching issue, first and foremost. 
on um, the players they they got to play and they got to execute but it, that something like that that will definitely start at the top because you're talking about play calling and my apologies from the last question my guy Keem said thanks for the platform you give us as Ravens fans to voice our opinions and questions and as always stay blessed now I, I appreciate that a lot because that's that was extremely important uh that something that I really wanted to do uh on here so I thank you for that man uh so next question came from my guy Sam he said what's up in Graven Hope you and your fam are doing well, as well as a team keep it clean family. Thank you. Uh, straight from the horse's mouth. I'm sending this message during the game and heard the commentator talk about his interview with Greg Roman. He quoted that Roman thinks of Andrews and likely as wide receivers and considers Boyle and Oliver as tight ends and blockers. Hey, you, like, we we knew that. Like, you, you could, but let, let's keep going, man. Um... <laughs> He said, why is he still employed? He's obviously confident enough to openly voice his terrible schemes, concepts, and philosophies as if his seat uh, isn't even fairly warm. I nearly, I, oh, excuse me, I never believed in the existence of any vault, but it makes you question whether or not the front office and coaching staff cares about winning. Uh, Harbaugh's insecurities with avoiding staff members and players that will speak their minds are truly costing this team. We always talk about Harbaugh putting players in a doghouse because he keeps docile dogs around him. I believe he still has PTSD from the dogs on the team from his first few years as our head coach. Only dog we have now on the team is, of course, MP Juiceman, and he's doing his best to hold his feet because he knows he will be released. I, he, he ain't gonna be released. Uh, I think with MP, I don't, I don't know if they. I don't, I don't really think they're gonna sign him back next year. I, 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 I don't, I don't think they're going to, man. Um, I, just business, man, business. But I, I don't think they're gonna re-sign him. But um, anyway, keep going. He said uh, the culture Harbaugh has created makes us a soft team in a warrior slash gladiator sport. Knowing your job isn't enough to win this game, it takes grit, passion, heart, and a dog slash beast mentality to react. And respond instinctively. Uh, well, there goes a screen pass to Duve on third and twenty-two, with the commentator stating that we have to open up our passing game. Now that one on third and twenty, I remember the play you're talking about. That one specifically, I ain't have a problem with that. I ain't expect them to get a third and twenty-two. They were way backed up. I thought they were just gonna come out, run the ball, and call it a day. But so I ain't had no problem with that play call. But my biggest issue was again. I, I talked about this. I tweeted it during the game early on. Like, man, they, they got like 50 tight ends on the field and one wide receiver. So it makes the offense limited and predictable. And it's, I, I just, I, I, I hated it. Um, anyway, he said, only thing anyone can ever talk about is our run game, which is not going to take us anywhere in the current league. I'm a fan forever, but I've completely lost faith in our front office. We have a great team slash player personnel with the exception of big play wideouts. I hate that their careers, time and effort is wasted on an organization that cares more about its staff rather than the players and the success of the team. Players coach, best organization, ruled questionable. Uh, and he said, uh, P.S., yet another year of third and long plays with Justice Hill getting the ball, shaking my head. Sorry for the long vent. And I appreciate you for the community you've created. Thank you so much. And hopefully we can pull out a win. Hashtag team. Keep it clean. So he sent that at 951. So that was during the game. And yeah, I, I get the frustration. I understand it uh, completely because it is like, but to the part, the part that he was where he was getting at from the beginning, uh, that Greg Roman thinks of Andrews and likely as wide receivers. They are pass catchers. But again, they are not wide receivers. You, you cannot have Mark Andrews, Isaiah Likely, run the same routes with the same effectiveness as the wide receivers. They can run some routes. They can catch the ball. They can make some plays. They're big targets, but they're still tight ends. They're not bad tight ends, but they're still tight ends. They're, they, they, they're explosive at tight end. They can get some yak, but they're still tight ends. You're not going to even use them the same way that you would use a wide receiver. Next question came from my guy Oreo Cookie. He said, Hey, Graven, how's it going? I'm doing well, but this is before the Bucks game, so that could dictate how I'm go doing. <laughs> so, so I guess you was still doing well after two. Uh, but anyway, I had heard that Skip Bayless had a source, uh, trust, a trusted inside source in the Ravens locker room. And according to him, Lamar is not happy and it is not as focused in meetings and they're showing up late to him. Just want to uh, know what you think about this. Sorry, it was longer than the usual, but I was curious and have a great rest of your day. No, this wasn't a long question at all. I, I think it's true. I, I think um, cause he, Skip talked about uh, Lamar's upset that the Ravens hadn't paid him and he was sort of um, not checked out, but just. They said he wasn't as into it as he used to be. Um, 
And I, I, think it, I think it could be true. I mean, we, we heard the report like it was a week and a half ago, I think. Um, the reporters were talking about they, they were at practice. And they were like, oh, Lamar's not out there. And this was two days straight. They were like, Lamar's not out there. Lamar's not out there. And then they're like, oh, Lamar came. He came out late because he was inside, inside throwing or something like that, they said. But he, they said he came out late. And I was like, oh, okay. I was like, oh, whatever. Uh, so it was Skip saying this. I was like, oh, okay. Maybe, maybe it could have been a cover-up that the Ravens were doing. They were saying, oh, Lamar's inside or something, whatever they said. But anyway, um, it's like one of those things where it's like what well, – I think it could be what more do, do I have to do? What more should I have to prove in order to get my money? What else do I have to prove? I've been at jobs myself where I'm like, well, I, I've wanted a raise because I, I, oh, I remember specifically. And it was so frustrating because they had given me a like a promotion to where they but it wasn't official. See, that was, that was a tricky part. They had, gave, they had given me this promotion. I was doing more work than I had been before. Giving more responsibility than I had been before. Even give, giving a different role than I had been before. And so I was doing all this stuff. I'm like, okay, cool. I'm doing all this. And I was doing a good job at it too. Holding it down. But I was like, all right, when am I going to get paid for it? Oh, yeah, we'll talk about it. Okay. Some time went by. All right. Hey, when am I going to get paid for? When, when am I going to get the raise? Time went by. Oh, no, we'll, we'll talk about it. We're still looking at some things. It's like, okay. Okay. All right. Keep going. Hey, so uh, so about the raise. So, oh, uh, we, uh, well, we, uh, and it was it was a lot of like beating around the bush. We, we had a lot of talks. We had a lot of talks and back and forth, negotiations, whatnot. But they never ended up officially giving it to me. And they gave me some garbage answer as to why they weren't going to they weren't going to make the, the the actual thing that i was doing an official position and then i was like you know what i don't want to do it anymore because I, why would i do all this extra work i'm putting in all this extra work and you're not even going to compensate me for it so what, what, what am i doing it for what's the point so i, I decided to stop doing that position so it's like I, I can understand how that can be because it's frustrating. You put it in the work. You, you did all this. You don't prove yourself already and you still not get paid for it. And they, they, I, I understand that frustration. Next question came from my boy Jeremy. He said, what's good, Engraven? Hope all is well with you and the fam. Uh, what do you all think the issue is with the Ravens snapping the ball as the play clock expiring? Um, is it Greg Roman not getting the play call in efficiently? Lamar struggling to relate a play call? Confusion with per with personnel or what? I, I I don't even know, man. I don't know. I don't. Maybe it's by design. Uh, I I have no clue. Um, I got no clue. I, I don't. I don't know what that's about. I don't know why it is the way that it is. And it's been an issue for so long, for for, for years, for years. So now it's one of those things. Like it's one of those things that we just uh, we just deal with. Because we know it's happening uh, And it's been happening And we expect it to happen Next question came from my guy Howard He said what's happening Graven uh, I wrote in the comment section of your post game thoughts video That I didn't like Lamar's body language And he seems distracted and not fully engaged to some degree I saw the clip on Twitter from Fox Sports Skip Bayless uh, That he uh, has a credible source within the Ravens locker room That told him that Lamar is really unhappy That the Ravens didn't offer him the Watson type of contract And his behavior during the week is definitely not the same As far as meetings and being late for practice Amongst other things Curious to hear your thoughts on that, Ravens Nation. Okay, so yeah, yeah, we just answered that one. And um, yeah, if if you're not like, if you're not compensated for your work, uh, that's an easy way to sort of mentally check out or whatever it is that you're doing. But you see, he's obviously not uh, mentally checked out because we saw the game the other night against the Bucks, uh, and that when that report came out, I believe it was true. Um, but I also love that he didn't let it distract him. Um, he didn't let it mess with his game. He still went out there, did his thing per usual. Now I'm really worried. Next question came from my boy George. He said, Angry, I'm going to keep this one short and sweet. On Undisputed, Skip said that he has a locker room source <laughs> telling him that Lamar had just been a tad bit late to practice and a tad late to meetings to show the Ravens he hasn't forgot about his money, LOL, and for making him play with this cloud of uncertainty over his head. This is the first I have ever heard anything like this, and that has brought uh, the whole contract situation to a, no, a whole new level. If true, what are your thoughts? 
So yeah, we just expressed that a couple of times. But another thing that I forgot to mention, that contract. I, I think Lamar is still thinking about the contract. I mean, how can you not? How can you not? How can you? I know he said he's going, oh, I'm going to focus on football. And I'm sure he focused on football. But at the same time, like, to to think about it, it like, especially after a good game, you got to be thinking about it. Like, man, I, I done made one mil, two mil, three mil, four. Now I'm making 23 mil, which is good, which is great. That, that's a lot of money, a whole lot of money. But I have the opportunity to get over 200 mil in guaranteed money. And that's not even the max of the deal, but and and, and two hundred mil. That's just that's that's gonna that's gonna be low. But I, I have the opportunity to get over two hundred mil in guaranteed money. That is ten. Oh, it, could, it could be over ten times what I'm making right now. I have the opportunity to get that in guaranteed money. Got to be thinking about that. And then especially after the game with the sign. I don't know. I don't know if that was a setup or it was just coincidence that that sign just. Came floating right where Lamar was walking into. And he just so happened to sign it, letting everybody know. And the last question to end this episode off, I guess it's similar to the first question, how we started it off. It came from my guy Howard. He said, what's happening in Graven? I like how Mike McDonald and the Ravens defense stepped up since that collapse against Miami. That's true. I agree. What I don't like is when the Ravens get a lead or are leading in the fourth quarter, we start playing soft coverages with the corners lined up way back off the receivers at the line of scrimmage and what we call prevent defense. Yes. I didn't like it. They were way back. They were way back and giving up the Bucks all this short stuff, man. Um, he said, I hate that defense. And as a true Ravens fan since 99, I've seen the Ravens lose a lot of games that we shouldn't have with that strategy. Just curious to know your thoughts on that, Ravens Nation. Yeah, I didn't like it because I know they didn't want to give up the big play. It's like it's tricky because, you know, the Bucks need big plays, but you don't want to keep giving up all these short stuff because they were getting yak and they were moving the ball downfield. Um, and at the same time, you don't want to get caught slipping and they beat you over top. So that's where it gets a little tricky yet. But yeah, I, I wasn't a fan of that prevent defense. Yeah, this feels like a dream. And you know just what I mean. You see my boy, he like got to made it. How to made it. Boy, he's a fan and he like the Ravens. Like the Ravens. And you know just what I mean. You two team keep it clean. You see my boy, he like got to made it. How to made it. Boy, that's my homie. Ain't that right and graven. Right and graven. Shout out to Graven.